Carl said there, put in a devastating performance, put in a performance where people are going to go away, the likes of us are going to be back in the studio saying, no, this lad's for real. He's, um, he's certainly going to be a contender in the future, and I think that's the best possible way of doing that. Everything outside, the ring, you're on a card, this with such big characters, go out there and let his boxing do the talking. Could be quick again, couldn't it? Yeah, it could be. Uh, but, I mean, KBL's a decent fighter, so let's see what happens, but I Absolutely. think it will be quick. OK, two unbeaten world ranked heavyweights. Intriguing fight on its way for you now. Our Slambek Mahmoudov against Ajit Kabayal. Darren Fletcher, Richie Woodor in commentary for you after Thomas Tribath. Ladies and gentlemen, we continue with a heavyweight championship contest. First, we welcome to the ring the challenger. Coming to us from Germany, here is the undefeated Ajit Kabayel. So here comes the European heavyweight champion from Germany, Ajit Kabayel. He's unbeaten. He dreams of one day taking the world title back to his country for the first time in almost 100 years. But he's facing such a difficult task here in Riyadh tonight. It's another one tonight, Richie. Two men unbeaten, two heavyweights unbeaten, and an opportunity for both of them here in Riyadh. It is, and Ajit Kabayal, you know, he has got a tough task on his hands here. He's 23 and 0. You know, he's a decent boxer indeed, but he's in against a very big man, a very strong man, so th there's certain tactics against that style of boxing that you've got to use. I'd like to see a little bit of movement from Kabayal. If he tries to take on this fella, his opponent, Mahmoudov, then he could come unstuck badly. So movement for me from Kabayal, let's see how it goes. He's decent, good record, 15 knockouts, decent power, but he doesn't want to be holding his feet against his opponent here. And he's on his way taking his time, soaking it all in, happy to be part of this gigantic boxing bill here in Riyadh. <laughs> Certainly got the experience as well, Fletch. He's been 12 rounds four times, remember, double European champion. His best win, undoubtedly, for me, was when he beat Derek Tazora in 2017, a point win over 12 rounds. So he's been in with real good opposition, and um, he's got experience, hasn't he? He'll need it tonight. a man who cuts a menacing figure and has the power and attitude to back it up, Arslan Beck Makhmudov. If you thought that Jai Opataya was a man with menace, wait till you see this fella. He's a wrecking machine carving his way through the heavyweight division. He looks the part, he acts the part, and he's got the ability to take you apart if you let your guard down. No nonsense sort of guy, isn't he? And when you hear him talk, he's like the baddie in a James Bond movie, this fella. Big, coming forward, strong, powerful, hunts his opponents down, but he does it with some skill as well. Remember, comes from that Russian amateur background, 
They talk very well, and um, he's, he's got some skill also, but it's his power and that front foot pressure which is his strength. I've always described him as a man who looks like he's fallen out with himself, and he's got that menacing scowl on his face as he steps into the ring here in Riyadh. One word of advice, having watched Jai Opataya do his business in the previous fight, don't take your eyes off this one either. for 10 rounds and it will be for the WBA Intercontinental and NABF Heavyweight Championships. Brought to you by Frank Warren on behalf of Queensbury Promotions. For Riyadh Season, a national event center in association with General Entertainment Authority, GIA, Gold Star Promotions, Sella. Bob Arams, Top Rank Incorporated, Eye of the Tiger Promotions, SES, and Blanco Sports. It is sanctioned by the British Boxing Board of Control, Steward in Charge, Robin Smith, along with the World Boxing Association. President, Gilberto Mendoza Jr., Supervisor, Mariana Borisova, along with the North American Boxing Federation, President Dwayne Ford, Supervisor Mauro Betty. Timekeeper is Andrew East. Our three judges assigned will be Kevin Parker of England, Guido Cavalletti of Italy, and Massimo Barrovecchio of Italy. Our referee in charge will be Steve Gray of England. Introducing to you first the challenger fighting tonight out of the blue corner. He comes to the ring wearing white trunks and weighed in officially at 238 pounds. Coming to us from Bochum, Germany, he brings an undefeated record with 23 wins. 15 of his 23 wins coming by way of knockout. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome Ajit Kobayu! And his opponent across the ring, he is the defending champion, fighting tonight out of the red corner. He comes to the ring wearing black trunks and weighed in at an even 260 pounds. A native of Russia, now fighting out of Montreal, Quebec, Canada. He is undefeated with 18 wins, 17 of his 18 wins coming by way of knockout. Ladies and gentlemen, here is the reigning and defending WBA Intercontinental and NABF Heavyweight Champion, Arslan Beck, the Lion Mahmoudo! Okay, boys, if a cold break, stop punching, take a step back. Don't deliberately throw punches down the back of the head. Protect yourselves at all times. Touch gloves. Touch gloves. So Steve Gray, the referee, Mahmoudov back eight weeks after his 72nd demolition of junior right on the Fury and Garnu undercard. Keep your eyes on it early. Mahmoudov's had 12 first-round wins since turning professional in 2017, and none of the last three men he's faced have managed to make it through the second. Caballel was down the night he won the European title, and any frailty with regards to his chin tonight will be tested by a man who's just stood there staring him out all the way through the introductions. Yes, uh, an intimidating figure, isn't he? Um, Mahmoudov holding that centre of the ring straight away, so the movement from Caballel on the outside. And like I say, Mahmoudov, he, he can get his, his jab going. Works well behind that punch, but he just goes for the opponent early, doesn't he? 12 wins inside that first round. He's explosive, dangerous early on. Oh, what a good shot that was from Mr. Caballar. Absolutely, good the kind of punch to give him some early confidence. Mahmoudov's a stone and a half, heavier, he's taller. 
And he's got this style where he's only focused on trying to knock the opponent out. Anybody who's been asked about this week here in Riyadh, he just said he's going to stand there and knock them out. That seems to be the way that he wants to go about it here against the European champion. Both of them unbeaten, 23 wins for Cabayel, 15 inside the distance, and 18 victories for Mahmoudov, but only the wily and experienced Carlos Takam has managed to take him the distance, but even then he said he got a legacy of a broken hand and couldn't hit as hard as he wanted to. I don't think he's the kind of man that gives anybody too much credit, is he? And no, he isn't, uh, Fletch. But Cabayel, he's doing what we thought he would do, actually. He's on the, the move, his movement's going to be important to stay out, to try and stay out of range of Mahmoudov, who, again, hasn't left the centre of the ring, has he? He's been well schooled, holds the centre, keeps the opponent on the outside. He'll have to cut that ring space off a little bit better and work his jab to work the openings for that big right hand that he has. There it was there. Absolutely. First time he's really let it go. Cabayel's got to be so careful, got to keep his concentration throughout. Any kind of mental slip, and Makhmadov is a heavyweight who will make you pay. Kabayel also, Fletch, may just target the right hand over the top for himself. You see the odd jab going downstairs, so that'll be to bring the elbows down of Makhmadov and then try and whip a right hand over. That will be easier said than done. And he'll try and establish a rhythm. Movement will be the key for Kabayel. There is support inside the arena for Cabayal, and they were quite vocal yesterday at the weighing, the Cabayal supporters, his team, and he seems prepared to stand there and trade when he has to, and that's a good sign for the European champion. Yeah, it is a good sign, he just doesn't want to hold his feet for too long, so pick the, oppo the opportunities here and there that he'll get, use them. But, oh, look at the power now from Mahmoudov, that right uppercut was a dangerous shot, the left hook, He's a little bit inaccurate with that final shot, but he's got good variation. That uppercut and left hook also were good punches. Well, he could be about to be one of the few men to make it through the first round against Mahmoudov. Kabayel, which in its own way is a little moral victory. Does get to hear the opening bell, and there were just signs in the first three minutes there, Richie, that he's got a bit of a strategy in there, Kabayel, that might just pay dividends for him. It's a strategy that we thought he would have. The movement, definitely, you can't hold your feet against this fella. He's hit and moved, he's had a fairly decent round, but I still think that Mahmoudov probably did the better work. And um, at the end of the round, he's just getting into his stride a little bit. One thing you would say is that looks can sometimes be deceiving because he, he looks such a menacing man, but he seems a really nice fellow when everybody stands and talks to him. He's got time for everybody whenever he does the interviews in the ring at the end of the fight, he's always very polite. But I think there's a switch that he is managing to flick when he walks into the ring that makes him such a mean man. Yes. And it's a switch that all champions need, isn't it? And he's certainly got it. So all set for the second round, Cabayal in his second reign as European champion. Tonight this is ten rounds for the WBA Intercontinental heavyweight title. He won it back in March against uh, Agron Smakichi. Uh, we talk about that victory he had against Derek Chisora, that was in a European title defence back in 2017. That's what he's got to watch out for, Flex there. He just went down to the body, but it was a slow shot. He can't afford to do that, Cabayel. Mahmoudov just um, misses with his reply, his counter, but Mahmoudov there was fast off the mark because Cabayel was a little bit too slow with that shot downstairs. He doesn't want to be doing that with that, with that lead hand. That's a decent shot by Cabayel. Got in and got out, landed while he was in there. If you just look at the legs of... He's got tree trunks for legs, they're very long legs, Mac Mudov, but he's got this very awkward wide stance and he's very stiff with his movement in there. A little bit stiff, but he holds the centre of the ring very well and obviously keeps his opponents on the outside. That's a great um, jab from him there. Chasing Cabayel into his own corner, but Cabayel able to slip away. The great Devin Haney has just sat down in front of us. Yeah, I need Richard to sit down, but uh, <laughs> when I seen who it was, I thought, oh, oh, better not. Well, everybody's here tonight. Cristiano Ronaldo and Conor McGregor are due later. Halfway through the second here, scheduled for ten between Arslan Bek, Makhmudov, who's a Russian now based in Montreal, and Ajit Kabayal, the European champion from Germany. Got to keep this movement going, Kabayal. 
A couple of times, Mahmoudov has come forward and a little bit too slow on his feet, and because Cabal's moving away from him, hasn't quite been able to connect with his right hand just yet. And that's because of the movement from Cabal, so important. Minutes ago in the second. And he's wide open, um, Mahmoudov occasionally with, for the right hand over the top. Kabayel's just got to get into that position and whip that right hand over. The movement to his right, he's moving away from Mahmoudov's right hand. So that's not too bad from Kabayel, the movement also. But the right hand over the top is what he's got to look out, look for. There's a long right that just missed from Mahmoudov. Every punch he throws is designed to take you out. Tried to whip that uppercut through and followed it with a left hook as well, just as Caballero thought he'd managed to escape. Landing that right hand from a long way back again. Mahmoudov. Well, he's made it through too, Richie. Yeah, he Kamael. has indeed. Fair play to him. I think Mahmoudov is at the better of the rounds, but uh, still, Kabayar has got through them. Kabayal has had more experience in the pro ranks. This is his 24th fight tonight, but he's actually three years younger than Mac Mudov, who, of course, was an amateur for a long, long time. Got a very experienced corner team as well, hasn't he? And Mark Ramsey and Russ Amber as well around him, Mac Mudov. Good men who can help him in the uh, career that he's chosen. As we see a bit of the action from the second round, and out they come for the third. So he's managed to do something that 14 of Mac Mudov's opponents have failed to do, which is hear the bell at the start of the third. So, so far, so good for Caballal, who's had one or two nice moments himself. But he's managed to this point to avoid, avoid those really damaging heavy shots that we know Mahmoudov can land and he landed a decent combination himself there got inside that long reach and teed off with two or three short sharp shots that just jolted Mahmoudov's head back yeah a couple of good shots he's probably got to watch out for Mahmoudov's right uppercut also though Fletch on the inside there he's had a bit of success Caballal actually closing the gap down and working better on the inside so Mahmoudov may bring the right uppercut into play but he's moving in the right direction, I think, um, Caballel, moving round to his right and lands a decent shot there. There's the right hand I'm speaking about, right hand over the top. Both of them start to land, and then maybe Mahmoudov just caught him with the right as Caballel was starting to open up a little bit, and that just made him think twice. But he's having to... Oh, what a shot that is from Caballel! Right on the chin of the big man from Russia! The European champion who came in as an underdog here is starting to take the fight to Mahmoudov. And this one might turn into an absolute war between these two, who seem intent now just to stand there and land the bigger shots. Just steps in the inside, didn't he, there, and whipped that right hand over. We spoke about it earlier. That's what he did. Caballero with great effect. He's had more um, success on the inside also this round. He surprised Mahmoudov, who's still dangerous with every shot himself. It's a cracking contest. Both of them throwing big punches. Caballero the more accurate. Mahmoudov going backwards for the first time. That's got to be a really encouraging sign for Caballero. Targeting Mahmoudov's body. Really good round for the European champion. These are wild swings from Mahmoudov. The better, more accurate work coming from Caballero. And at the moment, Mahmoudov's looking for a big punch to turn it in his favour. He is indeed, but he keeps missing the target, and that's what tires you out. Any heavyweight will tell you, you throw he heavy punches and you miss the target. Oh, oh, shot again, right punch. hand, he's wobbling Mahmoudov. Lands a good shot of his own. Both of them standing there toe to toe. Brilliant round of heavyweight boxing here in Riyadh. Right hand over the top again from Caballero. And he sends his victory himself. But look at Mahmoudov coming back with big shots. Who will land that big punch? I've got to say, Mahmoudov's taken two absolute beauties from Caballero in this round. And he's still standing.
20 seconds to go. Mahmoudov looking for a shot to turn it round his way. Cavallo's had a brilliant round in there. Who would have guessed this, though, Fletch? This is unbelievable boxing from Caballel. He's the one who looks like he's going to land that knockout shot. Oh, oh what a punch. Through the guard, what a shot. It just bounces off the big man's chin. He's made of granite, Mahmoudov. And there's the bell. That was brilliant. Three minutes of heavyweight boxing where neither man took a backward step, Richie. Yeah, incredible stuff. And the better eye-catching work yeah, came from Caballel. Caballel caught his opponent. On the inside there with that right uppercut, that started it all off. A couple of good moves on the inside, but it was the right hand over the top that we spoke about before that has paid dividends here for Caballel. Then lands the left hook, there's that right hand, so he set it with that long left hook and the right hand over the top. Super shot, but Mahmoudov himself was dangerous as he came back with his own heavy punches but exerted a lot of energy because he missed the target so many times. But look at that for the right hand. Super punch indeed. Rich, I've got to ask you this question. There must be so much encouragement for Caballel that he's landed the big shots, but it must be so demoralising that he's not managed to put Mahmoud off down with one of them. Very true. Yeah, Caballel's landed some big punches there. Really interesting, really exciting contest. Into the fourth. And everybody inside this Kingdom Arena is right into this one. Fantastic round the third. Let's see what they've got in store for us in the fourth. And they've picked up where they've left off. Yes, they have indeed. I think for Caballel, he's just got to be a little bit patient in and out with defeat. Because Mahmoudov, if anything, team seems to be tiring, Fletch. And look at Caballel now go for him again. Uppercut from Mahmoudov. Can't make Caballel go backwards at the moment, though. Mahmoudov on the ropes, takes a body shot. Looks so tired in there, Mahmoudov. Takes yeah. an uppercut. Caballel dominating the fight at the moment, but we know that Mahmoudov's got the power that can turn it round. Oh, what an uppercut. Oh, and another was. one, and a body shot. Sacks in the knees, and down he goes. Mahmoudov down. The body shot did it. The uppercuts before it started it, but the body shot put him down. What a shot that was. Up at the count of nine. Yes, oh, and we're going to have a shock here. Massive shock, and he's tired. He's bought a little, a few more seconds here, but watch Caballel come for him now. Again, up a great again. shot. Beautiful shots. Caballel so accurate. Mahmoudov looking for a big punch of his own. Still a minute and 45 seconds to go in the fourth. He looks shattered, Mahmoudov. Yeah, Having he... to dig so deep, he's never been tested like this. He's exhausted, but he's probably at his most dangerous also. See, he's swinging one. If he catches Caballel, who knows? But Caballel's going for it, Fletch. The big answer, the big question here is, can Caballel finish him off? He's like a big oak tree, sagging, sagging him down. Down for the second time in the round. Steve Gray with the count. Well, this is incredible stuff here. No one expected this, Fletch. This is a brilliant heavyweight fight. Caballel's been superb to this point. The body shots, he can't take the body shots and he's won it. Steve Gray stops it. And Mahmoudov, who was being seen as the most menacing man in the heavyweight division, the heavyweight on the rise, is taken apart by the European champion. A sensational result. Caballel was brilliant and Mahmoudov is beaten. Incredible performance from Ajit Caballel there. He showed some real uh, precision and quality shots downstairs that have actually beaten Mahmoudov, that's put him away. Certainly some good head shots as well with the right hand over the shot, but it's the body shots that have really taken their toll and Mahmoudov and done all the damage, Fletch. Richie, that was a systematic destruction of Mahmoudov from Caballel. The game plan was perfect, the punches were accurate, and when he started targeting the body, he broke the big man in half. I think the tactics were perfect from him from the very start. We spoke about the movement. Ajit Caballel went on the outside, picked his opportunities here and there, moving in, throwing the odd right hand over the top. Mahmoudov did what he always does, coming forward on that front foot. Looked so dangerous, but time and time again, Mahmoudov missed the target, and he was getting more and more tired. Then Ajit Caballel started to target the body. He hurt him downstairs with a super left hook, and it was the body shots that eventually took their toll and finished him off. Well, Caballel dreams of becoming the first German heavyweight champion of the world since Max Schmeling in the 1930s, the last German to challenge 
for a world title. It was Axel Schultz against Michael Mora back in 1996. And that victory there on this bill tonight will make people stand up and take notice because there were so many high hopes for Mac Mudov, who'd been so destructive as a pro. But he had no answer to Cabayel tonight. No, he didn't. And the right hand over the top from Cabayel was an accurate shot. And then he switched downstairs with body shots like that. Those two body shots there, left hook, right hand that uh, connected. They're here for punches. And um, Mahmoudov couldn't recover from them. Another body shot went in. But also the right hands over the top from Cabayel were key. They really were so important. And then he switched tactics and targeted the body with really heavy punches. And Mahmoudov goes down and doesn't get up at the end. Look, what is body shot there? Another body shot coming in. That was luck. That looked low, didn't it, though? That one. But nevertheless, he carries the attack on. Right uppercut. Another left up downstairs. And look at the grimacing face of Mahmoudov. What a performance from Cabayel. No one saw that coming. Four fights, four stoppages. And the card to this point is living up to all the hype. I mean, that was a brilliant fight. Two men stood there toe-to-toe, -to -toe, big men. And in the end, the stronger man was Ajit Kabayal, and he's going to have his hands raised very, very soon by Thomas Schreiber. And the way he lost that fight, Mahmoudov, that's a long way back in this division for him because he was taken apart. Yeah, he certainly was. and He probably didn't expect it himself, did he? But he tired so quickly. And when you get hit with shots, the right hands, that they, they add to that tiredness, then the body shots, then he was hurt, wasn't he? But when you're missing, missing constantly because of the movement from your opponent, then they, that, those misses took their toll also on Mahmoudov. Well, I think we're getting ready in there for the official result. Steve Gray calling the boxers together. And I think we can go up there and join Thomas Triber to get the official result. Ladies and gentlemen, here is the official time. Two minutes, three seconds of round number four. Your winner by way of technical knockout, still undefeated and new WBA Intercontinental and NABF Heavyweight Champion, Ajit Kabayel. Well, that's a statement win for the European Champion, Ajit Kabayel, who adds the WBA Intercontinental Heavyweight title and the NABF Heavyweight title to his list. And we've got Daniel Dubois against Jarrell Miller to come after this, and we're thinking that might be the fight of the night. Well, that's going to take some beating, isn't it? <laughs> that will take some beating. But yes, it's um, very exciting. Looking forward to Daniel Dubois versus um, Jarrell Miller. But that was a terrific display from Ajit Kabayel. And I haven't spoken to many people here, Fletch, that thought that Ajit Kabayel was going to win this contest. You know, when I was trying to work out, I said to you, his movement's going to be the key. He's got to keep the movement going to have any chance of victory. So, yeah, what a performance. Absolutely. And quite rightly, the celebratory photographs are being taken in there. And that's a big, big win for him, a statement win. And you want to make a statement win on a card like this. Let's hear from him. He's in the ring there with Chris Mannix. Aja, congratulations. I think a lot of people this week looked at the size of Mahmoudov, looked at the size of you and believed this was going to be maybe a showcase type of fight for him. Instead, you reminded people that you are right there on that world level. What did you think of your performance? First of all, thank you, Turkshank, for the great opportunity. Yes, I give my best and win the fight. We're training for this, you know. I shock the world, maybe, huh? When you talk with 10 guys, nine guys say, I could never win. Today, alhamdulillah, we win. What was your game plan coming into the fight? Because you knew he was bigger, maybe a little bit naturally stronger, but your quickness was certainly a factor. Yeah, my movement was a game play, the body shots, and after come to the head, yeah, see, the, the labor king. <laughs> At what point could you tell that the body shots were hurting him? I don't know. I win the fight, I'm happy, and uh, the training camp is finished, the fight is finished. Now I have a rest. we see you soon, inshallah. When you, when you look at the, let me ask about the fourth round, the final round of this fight, did you feel like you were hurting him every time with those shots in the body? Yes, yes. I see on the, on the face, um, 
He's not here, you know. I see him and I finish the fight. You have been mentioned many times as a potential opponent for the likes of Anthony Joshua and Tyson Fury. You remain undefeated. What do you want to do next? I don't know. When they give me the great next opportunity, I'm ready. I come for everything. We are ready. We shock every day. Congratulations. Alhamdulillah. Thank you. Mike. TNT Sports Box Office. Presented by William Hill. TNT Sports Box Office.